Uh, question number 14. When driving at night, you should. What you should do when you drive at night, uh -huh, you need to adjust your speed. Uh, you need to adjust your speed in order to keep your stopping distance within your sight distance distance within your sight distance that's how you need to adjust your speed when you drive at night and you you cannot clearly see okay let's see question you choose you correct it hit enter yes and you see that's a like a, a little trick uh, you don't even need to remember the whole stuff if you see this word within aha uh -huh, that's uh, in most cases uh, the indication of the correct answer so, again, when you're driving at night, what you should do, you should adjust your speed to keep your stopping distance within, within your sight distance. Question number 15. Which of these statements about downshifting is true? How you need to downshift to put the, well, uh, to lo the lower gear? And uh, mm, please uh, mm, remember, when you downshift for a curve or for a hill, you should do so before. Before you enter the curve, that's actually the general rule. When you need to do something, you need to do it before you start the, well, actual, um, uh, um, well, turning. Okay, when you uh, downshift for a curve, you should do so before and this uh, rule is applied uh, in well um, in uh, other cases also when you downshift for a curve you should do so before you enter the curve before curve you need to slow down you need to turn the lower gear before curve question number 16 for your safety when setting out reflective triangles you should you should hold the triangles between yourself and oncoming traffic. What does it mean? You are not asking how far you need to put your reflective triangles. Actually, there are three of them. But uh, you need to remember, you need to put the triangles for safety between yourself and oncoming traffic. So the oncoming drivers uh, would be able to see you. Mm -hmm. Safety between yourself and oncoming traffic that's how you need to hold the triangles let's see if we are correct yes we are triangles need to be put between yourself and traffic all right good question number 17 as the blood alcohol concentration abbreviation bac you will see this abbreviation later on uh, goes up what happens when the blood alcohol concentration BAC goes up what happens uh, please remember oh, this word judgment and self-control there's these are two things actually judgment first thing which uh, is affected when BAC goes up judgment is affected judgment um, well, that's the first thing which affect your, well, uh, ability to drive. Your ability to control and uh, self-control. Judgment and self-control are affected. Question number 18. Which of this is a good thing to remember about using mirrors? How you are, uh, like, supposed to use mirrors? And... Uh, Please remember, when you use mirrors, never forget there are blind spots that your mirror cannot show. And that's, by the way, that's why you have to uh, use not only mirrors, but actually turn your head and look what is, well, behind, uh, well, uh, on your side. When you use mirrors, remember, there are blind spots that your mirror cannot show and the program says yes we are correct mirrors blind spots very short question number 19 hydroplaning uh, well you are asked what the hydroplaning is associated with and the hydroplaning is a special phenomenon which is uh, 
uh, well, um, characteristic for uh, uh, southern state, for example, when the uh, road is smooth and uh, uh, during the rain, uh, the road surface is covered with a very thin film of water and you start actually planes, you start, uh, well, um, you start losing uh, traction, your tires lose traction with the uh, road surface and that's what hydroplaning is and uh, obviously hydroplaning is more likely when tire pressure is low because you are not uh, able to use the advantage of your uh, tread depth okay hydroplaning very short question remember please it is more likely if the tire pressure is low mm -hmm. good Question number 20. If you are being tailgated, you should, what you should do, in other words, if somebody is uh, after you, not after you, but, you know, trying to, uh, too close yeah, to too you, close to you. Uh, and uh, in this case, again, safety first, please remember, you need to increase your following distance, not speed up. Not, uh, uh, not to break, not to uh, honk your horn. No, you need to uh, very safely, slowly uh, increase your following distance. The distance between you and uh, the driver in front of you. In, uh, well, in order if you need uh, to well, suddenly break, hit the brake, at least you will be able to, to do it. You will uh, have enough distance in front of you. Okay, so if you are being tailgated, somebody too close to you from behind, please, what you should do, you should increase your falling distance. Uh -huh. Okay, we have chosen this, uh, this answer. We hit enter and the, yeah, the program again advises you, you are correct. Tailgated, increase distance. Question number 21. A key principle to remember about loading cargo is to keep the load. How you are uh, well, uh, need to, to uh, distribute the load, um, the, the cargo when you load it, and uh, uh, the key word is balanced. 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 Uh, you need to uh, well to balance the cargo, uh, the the load in cargo area. Loading cargo, and uh, you need uh, to uh, well uh, to keep it balanced in the cargo area. Balance, balance. balance. Question number twenty-two: How far should a driver look ahead of the vehicle while driving? How far? And uh, well, please just remember: twelve to fifteen seconds. Uh, <clears throat> 12 to 15 seconds. That's the type of question you just need to simply commit to your memory. How far ahead a vehicle uh, of your vehicle uh, should you uh, well should you look? It's 12 to 15 seconds. That means the distance which your uh, vehicle travels well within these 12 to 15 seconds. When you're driving at 60 miles per hour, and 60 miles per hour you have to look. It would be another question. Another yeah, there, are, there mile. Would, would be another question uh, about the same uh, like principle. So you just need to remember 12 to 15 seconds. That's the distance you should look ahead of your vehicle while driving. Mm -hmm. Look ahead 12, 15 seconds. Question number 23. How do you correct a rear wheel acceleration skid? How do you correct a rear wheel acceleration skid? If your uh, well vehicle goes into the skid, your uh, uh, two well you hit accelerator uh, accelerating pedal too much, and your rear wheels goes into the skid. So uh, obvious, you need to stop accelerating. If the uh, well excessive acceleration causes the skid, just stop accelerating. Uh -huh. You see, again, this is the association. Acceleration skid, stop accelerating. And generally, right question 
uh, sounds exactly like this. Stop accelerating. Stop braking. It's a safety measure. Question number 24. The purpose of the retarders is to... Well, you need to know what the retarders are. Retarders, special devices, mechanical devices, electrical devices, devices connected with the um, engine, which help to, uh, well, stop the vehicle, to slow down the vehicle, which help the brakes to slow down the vehicle. And again, retarders could uh, be different uh, type. Uh, and what they do, they help slow the vehicle. You're not asking to actually what's the, well, uh, uh, specific types of retarders. Uh, as a driver, you are not, uh, like, uh, allow it. I mean, uh, you don't have to do to know it. But you need to remember that retarders, they help slow the vehicle uh, and reduce the brake wear. That's the advantage. There are all these advantages of the retarder, but uh, in the well, following questions, you will learn it also. Here, you just remember, retarders, the purpose of them is to slow the vehicle and reduce brake wear. All right. Question number 25. Controlled braking. Again, short question. Uh, well, you need to choose uh, the, the right uh, answer characterizing the, what the control braking is. And um, the control braking, please remember, mm, straight line. Yeah, it used to keep your vehicle in a That's straight the point. line. That's the point. You when you when you read in the question uh, control braking, uh huh. Start looking for this straight line because that's what control braking is used for to it's keep the vehicle a, in a straight line to avoid uh, going into the skid to avoid to protect you from losing control of your vehicle. Uh huh. Is control braking that something which is used to keep a vehicle in a straight line? while braking. Good. Question number 26. Which of these is a good thing to do when steering to avoid a crash? When you start turning your vehicle to avoid a crash, uh, so what is the good thing to remember to do in such a situation? Uh, <clears throat> please Again, remember, start looking for these particular words. Don't turn any more than needed. Don't turn any more than needed to clear what is in your way. So, well, even when one in the emergency situation, even if you need to, like, uh, uh, react immediately, immediately, to avoid a crash, Deep steal, oh. steal, yeah, please be uh, very cautious, try, at least try, remember that you please do not turn any more than needed to clear what is in your way, again, uh, the point is, if you turn too sharp, you, well, at risk to control, uh, mm, to lose control of your vehicle, right, very good, don't turn any more than needed, Hit the enter, yes, avoid a crash, don't turn any more than you need. Question number 27. You should stop driving uh -huh. whenever you become sleepy. Again, uh, there was a previous question, like about uh, 10, 5, 10 questions before, that the only thing which uh, uh, can overcome fatigue is the rest is sleep, uh, well, uh, you need to, mm, uh, the only uh, thing which uh, can help you to stay alert uh, is sleep. So, and that's why you should stop driving whenever you become sleepy. Stop driving. Stop driving. Stop driving. Not after five, after nine hours, after one hour, 13, and, well, doesn't matter. It could, you, the, the other choices could be given to you, but the right answer would be also Whenever you become sleepy, please stop driving. And again, the point is safety. 
Well, question number 28. Which of these is not a good rule um, to follow when caring for an injured person at an accident scene? Uh, interesting type of question. Mm, uh, you are not asked about the right thing to do. You are asked about wrong thing to do. You are asked what you not, what you have not to do at the accident scene when there is an injured person and you need to take care of, of this person. So be careful with this kind of questions. So you see, the right answer would be something wrong. Something which you don't, well, you are not uh, uh, allow it to, to do. And in this particular case, when you are asked about which is a not a good rule to follow, not a good rule to follow is to keep an injured person cool. Because according to the driver's manual, it's written there, you should to keep injured person warm. And, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the person who wrote this question uh, uh, trying to, well, trick you. And uh, uh, you might be, uh, uh, well, choosing this uh, 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 option. Cool. No, that's, that's a wrong thing to do. And uh, as a wrong thing to do at the accident scene, this is the correct answer. Please remember, not a good rule to follow. Keep an injured person cool because he, he or she needs to be kept warm at the accident scene. Mm -hmm. And the program yeah, tells you the same. You are correct. Injured person, keep cool. That's a right answer. Not right thing to do. Question number 29. You should avoid driving through deep puddles or flowing water. However, if you must. Which of these steps can help to keep your brakes working? In other words, to keep your brake pads dry. Uh huh. And the right answer is A. Gently putting on the brakes. Gently. While driving through the water. Uh, and uh, there is another good trick, good help to you. Gently. The word gently. Whenever you see the word gently, safely, Cautiously, most probably, that would be the correct answer. Not in 100% cases, but in 99% of the cases, whenever you see gently, safely, something cautiously, that would be the correct answer. And again, if you have to go through the deep puddles of flowing water, huh, uh, the one of the way to keep your brakes working is gently put on the brakes while driving. Mm -hmm. You don't have to break all the way down. You just gently put a little bit pressure on the brakes pedal and uh, well, that prevents the brake pads uh, get socked. All right, the puddles gently. Question number 30. Which of these statements about drugs is true? Please remember, that's easy association, easy question, but uh, it's very important for you to remember. The use of drugs can lead to an accident and or arrest. You as a driver, as a commercial driver, should never use uh, while drugs, uh, while driving, should never have the drugs in your vehicle because uh, the use of drugs can lead to your, to well, accident and your arrest. Okay, let's see. Answer C. Yes. Drugs, arrest. Drugs, arrest. <clears throat> Question number 31. Which of this is a good thing to remember when crossing or entering traffic with a heavy vehicle? Heavy vehicle. Please pay attention. Heavy vehicle means it takes time for this vehicle to uh, perform maneuver right and please remember if you need to cross the traffic if you need to enter the traffic with that kind of vehicle uh, remember it heavy it is big it needs larger gaps larger gaps heavy vehicles they definitely need more space the word which is used here gap 
Heavy vehicles need larger gaps in traffic than cars. Much more room. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, entering traffic, larger gaps. Question number 32. You are driving a heavy vehicle again with a manual transmission. You have to stop the vehicle on the shoulder while driving on an uphill grade. On uphill grade. So, which of this is a good rule to follow when putting it back in motion of the grade? So, you realize the situation. You drive, you stop on the shoulder, you uphill, and now you need to oh, turn it back in motion. <coughs> what do you need to do? Resume. Uh -huh. What you need to do in this particular case? Use the parking brake. To, to do what? To hold the vehicle until the clutch engages. You remember? This is manual transmission, so you don't have to, uh, well, rely on the, <laughs> on the automatic transmission to hold the vehicle. You need to hold the vehicle. You need to use the parking brake to hold the vehicle until the clutch engages in order to prevent roll back, right? You Because you are uphill. If you don't hold the vehicle with the parking brake, it might roll back and hit something behind you which you are not able to see at this particular moment. Again, the point is safety. Please remember, manual transmission, you stop on uphill grade, you need to get back in motion. What you need to do? Parking brake parking brake to hold the vehicle all right b uh -huh. uphill grade the program again uh, uh, every single time the program advises you you make a mistake you well look down and you see the right words you need to remember for the future well reference uphill grade use parking brake good question number 33 Again, you are driving a heavy vehicle. Huh? You now must exit the highway and, uh, oh, well, using an off-ramp. Off-ramp that does what? That curves downhill. You're probably familiar with that kind of, you know, uh, exit uh, ramp. It curves downhill. So, what you should do in this situation? You remember, guys? Point is safety. So, you need to slow down, but not simply slow down. You need to slow down to a safe speed before the curve. Before the curve. Okay, in advance, you need to slow down to a safe speed. Not, the posted limit, speed limit is not safe enough for you because the vehicle is heavy. Okay, you don't have to wait until you are in the curve. Again, that would be uh, very unwisely and, uh, well, not safely. So, well, when you need to exit a vehicle, uh, to exit a highway on a heavy vehicle, please slow down to a safe speed before the curve. Safe speed before the curve. Question number 34. Um, you must park on the side of a level, straight, four-lane, divided highway. Aha, uh -huh, that's a point. You need to park on the side of a level, on the side of a level, straight, four-lane, divided highway. Where should you place the reflective triangles? You see, I told you guys, divided highway, that's a point. If it is divided, all three of them... You usually have uh, to use three triangles, right? All three of them should be put behind you, okay? And uh, to the rear, in other words, to the rear, all three of them. And please remember, one need to put uh, 10 feet to the rear of your vehicle. Uh, the second one, 100 feet to the rear of the vehicle. And the third one is 200 feet to the rear. It's not, uh, well, difficult to, well, to choose the right answer. Three times rear, one, rear, two, rear, three. In other choices, so you see, it's uh, like a rear, rear, front, uh-uh, no. Uh, again, front, rear, rear, no, 
front. So all three to the rear. It doesn't even like uh, make uh, much difference. 10, 100, 200. All three to the rear or uh, well to your vehicle of the vehicle. All right. Rear, rear, rear. Triple rear. Number tw uh, question number 35. You are driving on a two lane road. An oncoming driver whoa, drifts into your lane and is headed straight for you. Which of this is most often the best action to take? Uh, please remember, and uh, this rule is applied also in, uh, well, most of the situation you can encounter on the road. You always need to steer to the right. In real life, it might be in different, well, uh, situation. But for the exam, for the purpose of the exam, remember, if you are asked what you need to do if somebody is heading straight to you, well, steer to the right is always a right choice. In ways of maneuver. Steer to the right. Well, number 36. Break faith. A uh, specific uh, word, specific terminology which is applied to the condition when your brakes start while well, losing their power. When they are very close to, well, to fail. When they are, well, it's time for, well, for you to take care of the brakes, to adjust, to fix them. So, fade, that's something, that's the condition when brakes start working improperly. So, you are asked what the brake fade is associated with. And uh, you need to remember, then, one of the conditions which can, uh, well, uh, cause brake fade is brakes getting very hot and when it might happen when you use the, the brakes your brakes too frequently when you push the brakes all the time well without uh, good reasons so brake fade can be caused by the brakes getting very hot let's see yes fade hot fade very hot number 37 now you're asking about uh, overheating of the engine and uh, you ask it which of the three given statements are uh, well one of them is correct about engine overheating which of the statements about engine overheating is true correct statement and please remember and this rule is also always applied to the safety matter. You should never, never remove the radiator cap on a pressurized system until the system is cooled. Most of the modern vehicles are equipped with the, well, special, um, special container, coolant container. And then that coolant container, you might uh, open the, well, uh, uh, the cap. But on the radiator cap, never remove, never remove the radiator cap on a pressurized system until the system is cooled. Because occasionally, well, the, the engine can be, uh, like, uh, get very hot. It could be dirty. Yeah. Overheating, never remove the radiator cap. Question 38. Well, which of the statements about overhead clearance is true? Overhead clearance, the distance between the top of your vehicle and the lowest point of some, like, you know, bridge, tunnel, something you need to go under. That is called overhead clearance. And uh, please remember that the weight of a vehicle changes its height. And uh, obviously, if you like load your vehicle heavily, it will be lower than if it's empty, right? Without cargo, without load. Please remember, the weight of a vehicle definitely changes it, its height. Okay, let's see. B, hit enter, yes. And the program again 
reminds you overhead clearance is connected with that particular phenomenon. The weight changes height of the vehicle. Question number 39. <clears throat> Which of the statements about vehicle fire is true? So, uh, please remember, a burning tire, a burning tire should be cooled with water. The shortest answer is the correct one here. So, that's, that's something you have to do in case of the vehicle fire and even to prevent the fire because the burning tire and, uh, well, overheat tire should be cooled with water that's the correct action and that's the only correct actions at the uh, well uh, at the fire scene you you need not to open the trailer uh, the the box uh, trailer box you you need not touch the um, the engine that's the only thing true thing allow it thing and the required thing you need to do a burning tire should be cooled with water and only water by the way not any other uh well maybe only sand but not any other liquid okay burning tire should be cooled with water very good tire water question number 40 you are driving a long vehicle which well that makes wide turn you want to turn left from one street onto another left turn okay long vehicle making wide turns and now you need to make left turn to turn left and both streets the streets you the street you are driving on is two lane two way street and the 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 street you need to turn in is also two lane two way street you should what you should do Please remember, it's very, uh, well, also um, wise uh, um, way uh, how you do the turns uh, in real life. Halfway. Halfway through the intersection. Left turn especially. You need to pull your vehicle forward until you get this point. Center of the intersection. It's called halfway through the intersection. And only now, only then, you begin turning your vehicle. You do not make your turn as soon as you enter. You do not make your uh, turn, well, uh, at the end. You make your turn, you begin turning vehicle when you halfway through the intersection. You pull it straight forward until you reach the halfway at the intersection. And then you begin turning it. And that's the way, uh, the safe way, uh, how you need to do uh, well, turns uh, on a long vehicle, uh, well, uh, driving the long vehicle. Okay, let's see if we are correct. Yes, so probably a left turn halfway. Прекрасно.